The Book of Salvation by Avicenna, also known as Ibn Sina, is a philosophical and scientific treatise encompassing various subjects that contribute to the understanding of the world, ethics, and the nature of the soul, ultimately offering guiding principles toward achieving intellectual and spiritual salvation. Avicenna was a Persian polymath of the Islamic Golden Age whose works in philosophy, medicine, and various other sciences had a significant influence on both Eastern and Western intellectual traditions. Although the Book of Salvation is not a commonly recognized title among Avicenna's numerous works, for the sake of this summary, let's acknowledge it as a hypothetical comprehensive synthesis of his essential ideas across his oeuvre. Avicenna begins by examining the nature of existence and the different categories of being. He distinguishes between the necessary being, which is self-existent and requires no cause, identified as God, and contingent beings, which require a cause for their existence. He argues that God, the first cause, is a simple, singular existence without composition, and from God emanates a hierarchy of intellects, leading down to the material world. Each existent being reflects varying degrees of perfection and is a mixture of actuality and potentiality except God, who is pure actuality. The second part of the work delves into metaphysics and the relationship between essence and existence. Avicenna introduces his theory of the essence preceding existence in, at least, our conceptual understanding of contingent beings. He suggests that we can conceive of the essence of a thing without acknowledging its existence. However, existence becomes actualized in individual beings due to the divine emanation from the necessary being. Following the discussion on being, Avicenna explores the components of the universe, suggesting that it comprises a hierarchy from the most sublime intellectual realms down to the earthly realm. He maintains that celestial bodies are animated by souls, which function as intermediaries between the purely intellectual realm and the physical world. The influence of these celestial souls accounts for the motion of the planets and stars and their effects trickle down, determining the nature and changes in the terrestrial sphere. Avicenna moves on to discuss the human soul, which occupies a central position in his view of salvation. He outlines the soul's faculties, which include the rational, the imaginative, and the appetitive. The human soul, according to Avicenna, is a substance that is not intrinsically bound to the body. It is capable of existing independently and is immortal. The soul's initial connection with the body is accidental rather than necessary. The perfection of the soul is a central theme of the work and is closely tied to the concept of intellectual and spiritual salvation. The path to salvation, Avicenna proposes, is through knowledge and virtue. He explains how the rational soul can acquire knowledge by abstraction from the sensory experiences of the physical world and by direct intellectual insight. True knowledge arises from the intellect's capacity to apprehend universal principles and to understand the essential natures of things. The more the soul knows, the closer it gets to the pure intellects and ultimately to the divine. In parallel to intellectual knowledge, moral virtue is crucial for salvation. Avicenna emphasizes the importance of developing virtuous habits, aligning one's actions with rational principles, and purifying one's desires. He draws upon Aristotelian ethics, advocating the mean between extremes in one's character traits and actions. Virtue, for Avicenna, is not just a matter of moral duty, but is essential for the soul's journey toward perfection and ultimate reunion with the divine. Avicenna dedicates part of the work to the practical aspects of achieving salvation. He prescribes a regimen of philosophical reflection, meditation, and ascetic practices aimed at detaching the soul from the distractions and desires associated with the material world. The philosopher suggests that through contemplation and the cultivation of intellectual virtues, the soul can transcend its material confines and achieve a state of metaphysical insight known as intellectual intuition. This state allows the soul to grasp realities that lie beyond the empirical world, leading to a form of spiritual bliss. Towards the end of the treatise, Avicenna grapples with the problem of evil and theodicy, maintaining that evil is not a positive entity, but a privation of good. He argues that what may seem evil in the limited human perspective serves a greater good in the divine wisdom that governs the world.
Suffering and imperfection are necessary components of a world made up of possibilities and potentialities, and they can serve as catalysts for the soul's development. In the realm of natural philosophy, which forms an essential part of Avicenna's worldview, he describes the principles underlying the operation of the physical world. He discusses the four elements, earth, water, air, and fire, and their qualities of cold, wet, hot, and dry. He elucidates how the interplay of these elements and their qualities gives rise to natural phenomena and the variety of substances found in nature. Avicenna's medical knowledge also makes an appearance in this comprehensive treatise relating the corporeal health of the individual to their capacity for achieving intellectual and spiritual well-being. He posits that maintaining the balance of bodily humors is not merely for physical health, but also for providing the optimal condition for the soul's intellectual pursuits. Finally, he concludes the work with reflections on the afterlife and eschatology. For Avicenna, the soul's immortality is a given due to its immaterial nature, but its state after death is contingent on the level of its intellectual and moral development during the earthly life. A soul steeped in knowledge and virtue is intimately united with the divine intellect, enjoying an eternal state of intellectual bliss. Conversely, a soul deficient in knowledge and virtue is distanced from the divine intellect, leading to a state of suffering and disconnection. Avicenna's The Book of Salvation is thus a comprehensive guide to understanding the philosophical basis for the universe's existence, the nature of the human soul, and the means by which one can achieve salvation through knowledge, virtue, and intellectual intuition. His work engages with an array of subjects, weaving together metaphysics, epistemology, psychology, ethics, natural philosophy, and medicine into a coherent picture that aims to guide the reader toward both intellectual and spiritual fulfillment.